This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Welcome to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler at uh, Regary Financial. He's the Vice President, Chief Investment Officer there. And uh, Logan, of course, can help you get to and through retirement. That's what this radio show is all about. And Logan, how you doing today, man? Good to be with you. Yeah, I'm doing good, Ron. Get to get to be here with you for an hour and talk about some of my favorite topics, retirement planning and retirement education. So can't complain. This is Ron Stutz reminding you that Logan Sadler has a very important phone number, and you can call this number anytime and leave a message if you like, 888-823-PLAN. You know, the best thing to do is go ahead and call right now during the show. That way you don't forget. 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. Leave a message with your name and phone number, and uh, you can have a um, discovery meeting, uh, kind of a getting to know you session with Logan Sadler, one-on-one talk uh, on the phone or via Zoom or maybe in one of the offices, Hemet or Redlands, 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make that happen. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on in the show. Well, first of all, uh, it is Mother's Day, and we want to wish all the moms in the audience today uh, uh, a very happy day, and uh, I know you want to echo those thoughts, Logan. Absolutely. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be anywhere without our mothers, right? So, Absolutely. yeah, hope they have a very special day, and uh, thanks for listening. Well, we're going to talk more about Mother's Day coming up in just a few moments here, but first I wanted to ask you if you saw this crazy story about a woman in Wales who married her cat in an attempt to keep her landlord from separating them. She says she's had to rehome three animals in the past because of landlords who did not allow pets. A civil ceremony was held in April, just a few weeks ago, to join the woman and her cat, India, in matrimony. Have you ever heard of such a thing? You know what? I haven't. That's that's the best. You know, you bring some great elements to the show here, like this this good stuff <laughs> out of left field. But no, I haven't. I haven't heard that one. And I, now I'll be following along. Very interested to see how that turns out. That is absolutely crazy. I don't know if that, how legal that would be if you decided to yeah. marry your cat. But, you know, this woman decided to do it. And uh, maybe it's working. I don't know. But, well, today's world, you never know. Yeah. We talked about... Um, mom just a moment ago and uh, how we all want to wish you, all the moms in the audience a happy Mother's Day. And in honor of Mother's Day, let's t- take some of the things that mom used to tell us and apply it to our financial planning. And I don't know about you, Logan, but when I was growing up, my mom used to always say when I was arguing about something or couldn't understand or, or didn't agree with something she had told me I had to do or, or could not do, and uh, I would press her for an answer. It kept saying, why, <laughs> why? And yep. finally, she would say, because I said so. <laughs> you ever hear that oh, one yeah. in your life? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that's in every mom's repertoire there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, relating that to financial planning, I think a lot of moms out there or, you know, any parents in general, um, they said that, you know, because I said so, probably because they didn't have a better answer at the time yeah. and or they didn't want to further explain, you know, and I think that definitely transitions into retirement planning. Unfortunately, a lot of advisors can't really explain their reasons behind their recommendations. They, they And they don't really know a way to help you understand it, but it's really important for you to get a better answer to that question that is a lot better than, you know, because I said so. You know, you need to do this investment because I said so or because I think it's a good idea. I'm a type of person, I want you to show me how it is a good idea. You know, further explain, show me some either charts or some, some uh, you know, educational resources on how this could really help me and why, why we're putting this in my plan. And that could go for a lot of advisors say, oh, tax planning, make sure you're tax planning. Well, what does tax planning mean? You know, <laughs> further explain how that could really benefit me and bring value to my retirement plan. Same with Uh, risk. You know, if we're talking about we're taking too much risk, really show me some better ways out there to reduce risk and what the impact would be, as well as if you're talking about annuities or life insurance products or any of that into a portfolio. I think those are very important to show show past performances or illustrations or really what what are we solving by using this and really give you a better answer well because i said so or because i think they're a good investment show me how they help people and why they're a good investment (laughs) and that's because i said so (laughs) exactly (laughs) well another thing that mom used to say to me all the time is uh, if you want to act like a child 
I'll treat you like one. I'm sure you've heard that one too. Yeah, unfortunately, it feels like I'm getting yelled at by my mom in this segment. But yeah, it <laughs> it uh it it does tend to fit, you know. And uh, and I think that translates to to retirement planning again very smoothly because when you're dealing with a lot of these big broker houses or big wire houses out there, um, they typically you know they they invest your money more more often than not a lot more aggressively than you probably thought otherwise, or maybe than you instructed them. And that's because most people don't really know any better. You know, they just kind of, oh, I trust this guy, I'll let him do whatever he kind of wants. And then all of a sudden, that's why you're 60 years old investing like you're 30. And yeah. I think, you know, if they if you want to act like a child, they'll treat you like one, essentially. So my, my opinion on that is it's very, very important when you're meeting with an advisor, you need to really, really uh, communicate with them and, and really articulate that what is important to you? What is your goals? And what are your concerns with your money, your retirement plan, whatever you're talking about? And really make sure that they're a good fit for, for making sure that you can communicate. I always tell people, you know, being an advisor is one thing, talking about investments is one thing, but you have to be able to have that rapport with your clients and your prospects or your potential clients, family members, whoever you're meeting with. It's so important that you can communicate and they can communicate with you to make sure you're getting them that proper investment and treating them not like a child, but like, you know, a grown up human being with their, with their big boy pants on, ready to talk finances. <laughs> yeah. uh, the number to call, Logan Sadler, if you'd like to have a conversation with him, is 888-823-PLAN. That is for Regary Financial, 888-823-PLAN. You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. And we're talking about financial planning with mom. You know, we can learn a lot from dear old mom. And the older I get, the smarter my mom uh, seems to get, you know, when I think no about kidding. that. And my mom's been gone a long time, but I'm thinking about, I understand in so many ways, so many of the things that she said to me that make sense now as an adult and did not make mm-hmm. sense to me as a child. But one thing that I heard a lot, particularly when I started wanting to go do things when I was like in my early teens and that sort of thing, if all of your friends jumped off a bridge, would you do it too? Have you heard that one, Logan? <laughs> yeah, the, you know this one is something where, especially I think you know, like you said, the teenage years, you hear this all the time because you you do all these really uh, at the time they sound like great ideas, and all of a sudden that's exactly what mom says. Well, that just because your friends didn't doesn't mean it's a good idea. Would you jump off a bridge too? You know, you're like, dang it. <laughs> and at the time, like you said, it sounds kind of crazy, but now looking back, it it, it it definitely was fitting for for that scenario. And it certainly <laughs> applies to financial planning as well, doesn't it? It really does. I think, you know, this is very, very common in the financial world. And I hear it. I know even on the viewers' questions we talk about all the time or meeting with all these different people throughout the years, it's really stunning to me how people make financial decisions based off their friends, coworkers, or neighbors. I mean, a lot of those people, they're probably their lives or situation looks nothing like their own. I have a few examples to really talk about here. I mean, you have one big scenario that's totally different is married versus single. When you're talking about, I know we've done a segment on this, I think on the last show where we were talking about that, where it is something where if you're married versus single, it is a huge, huge difference as far as what might fit, what might not fit, because you're in two different scenarios. One situation has two incomes, one has one. You know, it's a lot of a different atmosphere when it comes to planning. The next is, you know, my brother's very wealthy um, versus me. I have 300000 in my 401k and I'm, I'm doing whatever my brother says, right? Well, if your brother's very wealthy, he's probably taking either more risk or has access to different products or is using different solutions that really, really might not pertain to you in your situation. You know, I think, so really understanding what playing field you're on. The other one is I always, we always talk about this one on the show, Ron, I know, you know, hey, well, my neighbors took Social Security at 62 and he says, everybody should take it at 62. Yeah. Well, well, you know, just because, like I said, just because your friends jumped off the bridge doesn't mean you should too. You really, on all those types of financial decisions, you really, really want to make sure that you're, you're sitting down with a professional and making sure you're getting something that's custom fit to you, not your, not your neighbor, your brother, or a friend. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, we say that so many times. Don't take the advice from your brother-in-law or your neighbor or your coworker, something you heard at the water cooler, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, base it on fact and not on assumptions and, and all that sort of thing. And uh, one more thing that mom used to say a lot to me is, one day, Ron, you'll thank me. And I, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't appreciate that back then, but I do now. No kidding. Yeah, that's another one that it really... It does hit home for a lot of people, I think, you know, because we always look back on things and say, well, 
yeah, that did kind of make sense, right? At the time, it might not have sounded like a perfect idea or, or might not have sounded like good advice at all, but you look back and go, well, that actually was pretty valuable. And that really, really retains the financial planning and financial advisors. I think sometimes when you're working with a good financial advisor, the benefit might not be extremely immediate. Uh, you know, you might... Uh, you might question whether the fees are worth it or whether you, whether you think you could probably just do it yourself. But when that advisor really stops you from making a bad decision uh, or keeps you from losing a fortune during a big market crash or helps navigate maybe like a tricky situation like a divorce or being forced into early retirement, you'll be really thankful you have a good advisor by your side. That That's kind of what I always tell people because a lot of advisors, it's, it's hard for us to articulate what it is we do and what value we bring to the table. Like you said, Ron, I mean, it looks, it always sounds kind of iffy at the time, but when you look back, a good advisor could potentially save, you know, thousands of dollars on different, different instances, whether that's, you know, selling during the wrong time of a market condition, you know, kind of talking you off the ledge, so to speak, or whether that's really emphasizing how important tax planning is and taking advantage of Roth conversions or taxable brokerage accounts and really being able to maximize that, you start to wonder, you know, is this 1% I'm paying for this set advisor or this planning fee I'm paying for this advisor or whatever it is, is it really worth it? And I always tell people a really good advisor. And I know like myself, my, my biggest goal is I always try to show people how we can make a difference. It's not just, Hey, buy this stock or sell this bond. It's a lot more that goes into articulating what a comprehensive advisor really brings to the table and what problems we solve. They typically well outweigh themselves and the clients typically should be getting way more value in return than what they're paying, especially over the long run. And that's that's always been our goal here at Regary Financial. Well, call Regary Financial and uh, get a conversation going with Logan Sadler about your situation. Logan, I'm going to give out the number again in just a moment here. But when you have a discovery meeting with someone who calls in from the show, and uh, this is the first time you've talked to them, uh, they've arranged this by calling this special number. Uh, how's that conversation going to go? Yeah, that conversation is going to be a big boy conversation, right? Not not your mom talking to you. It's going to be, we're really going to dive into who, who you are, what you're trying to do, and really look at the big picture when it comes to financial planning. A lot of people maybe have met with a financial advisor in the past or currently have one, but they're not getting the value they really need when it comes to a full service financial advisor that looks at more than just what investment's the right fit, but really what planning impl- implementations that they could That's put easy in. For you to say. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That planning implementations they could put in to really benefit their long run. Yeah, for sure. Uh, hey, let me just tell you call this number, 888 823 PLAN. One day you'll thank me. 888 823 PLAN. We want to say happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. And if you're lucky enough to have your mom around, please do something special for her. 888 823 PLAN is your number to call if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan Sadler at Regary Financial. He's the VP and Chief Investment Officer. And we appreciate your listening to the show. Logan always enjoys meeting new folks. So if you're one of those, call this number right now 888 823 PLAN. Leave a message with your name and phone number and you'll get a call back. We'll be back in just a moment with more of The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. We all know Congress has approved trillions of dollars in spending the past year with stimulus packages, infrastructure plans, and other programs. It's all on top of the tens of trillions of dollars of debt our nation already owes. Yet we're living with some of the lowest tax rates in history. Now, how long do you think that's going to last? Learn how you can prepare for future tax implications by watching Logan Sadler of Regary Financial's exclusive webinar, How Tax Planning Changes Through the Four Stages of Retirement. Just text the word ADVICE to the number 21000, and we'll text you back a link to the webinar right away. Text ADVICE to 21000 and make sure you don't have to pay a cent more in taxes than you have to. To access the free webinar right now, Text ADVICE to 21000. Do you ever find yourself skipping through countless songs trying to find the perfect one? Yeah, we've been there too and know it can be frustrating. Much like skipping through the countless advertisements from other financial advisors, it can seem like there's so much misinformation. But here on The Financial Beat, you can rest assured we're providing you with the best information possible. So don't push skip on this show because we have some important information coming up. 
Welcome back. The beat goes on, as they say, the financial beat with Logan Sadler, VP and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Hey, not only does Logan have this radio show, but he has podcasts and uh, lots of videos on his YouTube channel. We'll tell you more about those a little bit later on in the show today. But Logan Sadler works with three different generations of some of the client families at Regary. Many of those clients have been with the firm for more than a quarter of a century. And it's important to point out that they have terrific partnerships with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, even Medicare specialists to help offer well-rounded guidance in all things financial for their clients. It's not just about the dollars, it's about the lifestyle as well. You can get a discovery meeting for no cost and no obligation. All you have to do is call this number, 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. We'll get back to that in just a little while here. But Logan, I got a fun fact of the week here for you. And I don't know, if you, are you a fan of sushi? You eat a lot of sushi? You know what? I don't. <laughs> Neither do I. I'm right there really? with you. But oh, okay. it's incredibly popular with so many people. And, it is. And, and a fun fact of the week that I kind of dug up earlier this week in preparation for the show, if you haven't eaten sushi by the age of 35, there's a 95% chance that you never will. <laughs> you know what? I, <laughs> that's a great statistic. I actually believe that. I uh, I have tried sushi before. Yeah. Uh, one time, it's not not my thing. I'd rather have you know chicken fried rice or orange chicken or something else yeah. uh, that's cooked. But uh, that's just me. Uh, my wife though, she she loves sushi. That's her, one of her probably her favorite meals. So yeah, I'm with you, Ron. It's just not my not my cup of tea. And I definitely believe that if you're not trying it early on, you probably probably won't. Yeah, a lot of things have changed. In, you know, like for when I was a kid, I didn't like Brussels sprouts and you yeah. know, things like that. But now I love them. But Me too. I don't. I don't think it's going to change with sushi. I just not in not into eating uncooked raw fish. You know. No, every like every like three or four years, I'll try it one more time. If my wife gets it, I'll just try a little bite. Yeah. And every time, it's like, yeah, nope, I can wait another <laughs> five years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's all individual. It's all, uh, you know, what, what you want and uh, what not what somebody else wants, just like your financial situation. Your situation is unique. We're all uh, individuals. And let's talk about do-it-yourself financial planning, which probably not a good thing for a lot of us. People mm-hmm. love do-it-yourself projects. There's even a DIY network where you can watch shows on TV about home renovation, landscaping, interior design, how to do all those things without calling in the pros to help you. So let's talk about the DIY mentality in retirement planning. Uh, Mm -hmm. Logan, when you come across somebody who doesn't have a financial advisor, uh, haven't talked to a financial advisor and not getting any help from anyone, what do you find are their reasons for taking a DIY approach? Yeah, yeah, good point. Um, I think uh, there's a few reasons. I've probably three of them. One is they've either had a bad experience in the past. Uh, maybe they worked with a, a financial advisor that wasn't either wasn't really a financial advisor or wasn't a good one, and uh, they had a bad experience. It uh, maybe they didn't feel they got any value from it, or they didn't feel that it was a good situation. Uh, that's that's that could be item one. Item two is it might not be the right time. You know, not everybody needs a financial advisor all the way through. I always joke. Uh, you know, you like your your uh, explanation of building a home there, Ron, or, or do it yourself projects around the house. If I'm going to redo my grass, yeah, I could do that myself. I'm pretty handy. If I'm going to build a little patio or something, yeah, I could do that. I'm pretty handy. But when it comes to redoing the whole house or building a new house, I hire a professional. Yeah. You know, I think that's what I always tell people. So if you're you know 20 or 30 years old, you might not need a financial advisor because you're just kind of building a patio here or there, and, and might need some kind of one off financial advice. But when you get to that third phase, which is that, that third point I was going to mention is when you're approaching retirement, you're basically about to build a new, whole new house, right? Your whole world's kind of starting over and we're switching from putting money away, growing our money over time, all those things we do while we were working to now, how do we get money out of this and how does it last and mm-hmm. what's the best way to do it? So the uh, third one for me would be a lot of people that are do-it-yourselfers, as they get later in life, they don't understand the the value that a financial advisor that should be bringing to the table when you look at all the different aspects that are out there uh, from a financial planning approach, especially as you're approaching retirement. Yeah. If someone has been um, putting away money and managing their money all by themselves, what are some of the triggers that might cause that person to come visit an advisor like you? 
Yeah, that's a great point. Um, kind of like we just talked about switching to where they're now they're probably going to be building the house. I mean, when you get to that retirement phase, or, or typically if you get into the high net worth phase, you typically are looking at something that's more we call it advanced planning. You know, you maybe have your Fidelity twenty thirty account <laughs> in your four hundred one k, and I always tell people a four hundred one k is not a retirement plan, and it's not a retirement uh, plan. It's really just a retirement account that is one account. It's not built to do multiple different things. So you're looking for advanced planning. That's tax planning. You're looking at how can I make this money last the rest of my life, as well as how can I pay the least amount of taxes and keep the most amount of my money over this next 20 or 30 year run. The other advanced planning techniques that most people tend to come to us for is fixed index annuities or fixed annuities. You can't get those all by yourself. You have to work with an advisor. And those do play a huge, huge role for a lot of people's retirement. If you're looking for either guaranteed income, those could be a great way to pay out like a pension. Or if you're looking for extreme bond alternatives right now where bonds have been just getting hammered and you're looking for a way to generate good returns with preservation of principal, um, then you look at the other stuff like private equity funds, structured notes, all of that you can't get on your own. You have to work with an advisor. And so I always tell people when we're looking at the big picture and really putting together that, that comprehensive plan for those higher net worth individuals that are looking for more than just a you know buy and hold portfolio or something that does more of what they needed to do in this next phase. You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, the show that's all about getting it to and through retirement. I'll tell you how you can get in touch with Logan and uh, get a conversation with him in just a few minutes here. But right now we're talking about do-it-yourself financial planning, DIY in other words. Uh, Logan, you're so good at telling stories. Uh, give us an example of a time that you worked with the do-it-yourselfer and were able to point out a flaw in their thinking that helped them avoid a, a mistake. And, and that's one of the things that you were able to do so often when you talk with someone, keep them from making a really serious major financial mistake. Yeah, you know, uh, I actually have a few clients I could think of off the top of my head, but let's let's call this one Randy, okay? <laughs> uh, Randy Randy had done very well. He was him and his wife did very well uh, saving for retirement, and all of a sudden, he got to that point where he would turn to about 65 years old, 66 right around that time. And he uh, ended up coming through us th through a referral. A good friend of ours who's a CPA sent him over, and she said, hey, help my friend Randy out. Randy had done a very good job, as I had said, saving for retirement. He did all that hard part as far as putting the money away. All of a sudden, he's 66 years old, and he has over seven different IRA accounts. Wow. Um, he only his, All of his money is in stocks and bonds. He has no other types of diversification. And over 60% of that money, again, was in one stock. I know I talk about this stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that's just a huge amount of risk for someone at that age. And having seven different accounts, he, he kind of was you know, getting confused on which ones were in what. He really kind of had very smart guy, understood the market, understood investments, but really was having a problem with keeping everything organized. And so we were able to kind of sit down and asking him, hey, what what are you trying to accomplish here? How much longer are you going to work? Have you looked at anything else out there as far as some bond alternatives or ETFs or any types of mutual funds that might bring some value? We were able to really sit down with him and we did our, our discovery process. We Over three meetings, we were able to get him down to three accounts from seven and really diversify his whole portfolio. And when we started talking to him about risk, as I mentioned, he had 60% of his portfolio in one stock. So what we were able to do is really offset some of that risk. He was able to maximize on a, on a lot of uh, you know gains over the years, but he was really able to get a more diversified plan that was more prepared for somebody transitioning into retirement. And it was crazy because we do this risk report with all of our clients when you're coming on board. We'll, we'll ask you where you kind of want to be or where you think you should be. And then we take all your statements and I run this uh, really great risk report that goes over all of your different holdings and what type of risk and what your portfolio would do during an up market and a down market. And w the number that he saw was not what he wanted, right? It was very, made his stomach hurt, so to speak. And uh, we were able to really take a lot of risk off the table and build out a great retirement plan for him and his wife to now transition in retirement. He's going to be retiring next year now. And so it was something where he just always has said, you know, that, that peace of mind you gave us by making sure everything was where it needed to be and using things that are more beneficial for me at this stage in retirement was huge. 
Well, I'm glad that you had the conversation with this guy and, and started working with him because you certainly changed his life. No question about that. Uh, Logan, what are the most common retirement planning mistakes that people tend to make when they're trying to do it all by themselves? Yeah, I think a lot of the time, uh, do-it-yourself investors, they tend to watch a lot of the news. And, and a lot of the times, the mistakes I'll see is some people aren't equipped to do it themselves. Uh, I will tell you right off firsthand, I have met some people out there where we've been uh, either through the radio show that have came in or, or events throughout the years or referrals, whoever it was, that have done a good job. And, and they are situated pretty well to where they probably would be just fine keeping things how they are. But the other side of it is the majority of them are, are not as, as educated as they might want to be. They don't have the time that it really takes to do this efficiently because I always tell people, I do this as a full-time job. Yeah. I have a whole team behind me, right? And uh, we do it we do it very, very well, but it's our full-time job. And so a lot of people, I don't know about you, Ron, but when you retire, a lot of people aren't looking for another full-time job. Yeah, you know, no. so <laughs> they're looking to hire somebody. And that's exactly what a financial advisor should be doing is taking all that off your plate. But I, I've seen it a lot where a lot of clients, they try to do too much themselves. And a lot of them don't understand what an advisor's real job is. And they, and they don't understand there's a lot more options out there in the, in the investment world that are a lot more comprehensive than just, hey, stocks, bonds, or a, or a 20, 30 portfolio through Fidelity or Vanguard or whoever. You know, There's a lot more that goes into real planning. And most people want more out of their retirement plan. They want peace of mind. A lot of people, if you're one of those people right now, listen to the show where you've worked 30 or 40 years and you're transitioning into retirement or getting close to retirement, You know, give us a call. Come in for that discovery meeting. And our process and what our plans are designed to do is to give peace of mind mind at the end of the day. So give us a call. I'd love to sit down with you and go over. If you are a do-it-yourselfer, I'd love to sit down with you and maybe see where, where you've done very well and maybe see if there's some gaps we could fill in to help transition you into retirement. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. Your number to call to get a conversation going with Logan Sadler. That number, of course, is for Regary Financial. Logan is the VP and Chief Investment Officer and would love to talk to you. 888-823-PLAN. It's all about information. And Logan, of course, gives out good information on this show, but certainly uh, uh, relishes the opportunity to sit down and talk one-on-one -on -one with you about your individual situation. 888-823-PLAN. That's your number to call to get a no-cost and no-obligation conversation going with Logan Sadler. Same guy you hear on the show here, 888-823-PLAN. This is the Financial Beat. Ron Stutz here along with Logan Sadler, and there's more coming up on the other side of this timeout. We talk a lot about creating a better 401k, but are we actually taking steps to do so? Maybe it's time to stop talking the talk and start walking the walk. By texting the word ADVICE to 21000, Logan Sadler can provide you with his 401k action steps, a guide that provides you with powerful information that could potentially save you thousands in taxes and fees and put you one step ahead when it comes to your retirement. So text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 today. For this special report, text the word ADVICE to the number 21000. It's getting to know you time. Hey. You're listening to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. And Logan, I got a question here for you. And uh, this is kind of out of left field. What life lessons have you had to learn the hard way? Oh, you know what? There's obviously too many to list there. <laughs> um, we, we all have those mistakes or things we wish we would have done earlier or done different. Right. Um, one, one of mine, I think that's kind of a cheesy one, but I really do mean it, is one thing I've had to learn the hard way is that time is not always on your side. You know, you always think you're going to be young forever or you'll do this when you have time or you'll, you'll do, go back to school or whatever that goal you had. Yeah. Things always kind of slip away. So my thing has always been trying to just take more advantage of living in the moment and doing what I, instead of talking about what I'm going to do, really try to do it and accomplish it, not let time get away from me. Yeah. Well, you know, it's ironic that we actually mentioned that earlier in today's show about time not being on your side. And Hey, it's closer, been on my mind. <laughs> yeah. Closer you get to retirement, uh, the more that is the case. Time is not necessarily on your side. All the more important reason to call Logan Sadler. I'll tell you how to do that in just a few minutes. You're listening to The Financial Beat. If you've spent the majority of your life diligently saving for your retirement future and have accumulated a nice sum, then listen up. 
Logan Sadler of Regary Financial has compiled a special guide for high net worth investors exploring nine investment pitfalls. Get the guide now to see how many mistakes you might be exposed to with your current financial plan. Text the word ADVICE to 21000. Learn about risk, diversification, taxes, emotional decision making, and much more. Just text the word ADVICE to the number 21000. Did you know music is good for the heart? A study at a university in Italy showed that music helps promote a better cardiovascular system. But we also know that a sound financial plan is good for peace of mind. Keep listening to the Financial Beat so we can help you find a plan that both your head and your heart can agree on. Welcome back to more of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. The one and only Logan Sadler has been doing this show for a while and uh, has podcasts that are available, has his own YouTube channel. You can check out a lot of information there. And we pass along a lot of information on this show. But, Logan, how can folks get uh, information from those other sources? Yeah, if you guys are more visual and like watching, you know, quick, short educational videos, you should head over to our YouTube channel. Go over to YouTube, type in The Financial Beat, and you'll see we have about, I don't know, 15 videos now that are up there where you could check out different retirement education, whether it's how to combat inflation or what are the five pillars you should have in your retirement plan. A lot of that's over there, so check it out on YouTube, The Financial Beat. We also have the podcast version. So if you're listening to this radio show right now and you're saying, man, I'd like to listen to this on my own time when I'm traveling around or at the gym or wherever you are, you can head over to podcast, whether that's Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music, and type in The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler and download and listen at your convenience. There's over 50 episodes over there. So head over, check it out. It is just that easy. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you're ready to have a one-on-one conversation with Logan Sadler. It's not going to cost you anything and not going to obligate you to do anything at all either. 888-823-PLAN. That is your number to call right now. Why not do it now and, and don't even take a chance on forgetting it. Hey, you know, one of the things we talk about a lot on this show is inflation. A lot of people, when they're planning for retirement or even thinking about retirement, they don't even give any thought at all to inflation. And inflation is a really big deal. And Logan talks about it all the time here. But uh, there's a quote that I read earlier this week. I don't know who said it, but he said, inflation is when you pay $15 for the $10 haircut that you used to get (laughs) for $5 when you had hair. <laughs> <laughs> I, li- I like that analogy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that in there. That's a great quote. But yeah, I mean, that, that sounds you know extravagant, but that sounds a lot like inflation, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure it, does. And, it, it, and I'm thinking in, in financial terms, I mean, it's a lot like your concern over your hair. You want to keep it. You want to preserve it. You don't want it to get away. <laughs> and, isn't that the truth? But it just it just keeps running sometimes. But yeah. but no, that's a great quote. I, I like that one because inflation is such a hot topic. And, and I've met with a lot of listeners that come in, you know, and call into the show and they understand inflation. But when we're able to sit down and show them the real impact, like you said here, I mean, the same types of items you're going to buy that you've already bought in the past, they're just double the cost, but your dollar is worth less. So yeah. it, it's a very big impact. Well, your your money is not safe when inflation is involved and you have to make plans to take care of that uh, little problem. Actually, it's not a little problem. It's a really big problem. But yeah. uh, that's one of the things that Logan Sadler does in your financial planning work. you got to account for inflation. can't just ignore it and hope it's going to go away. It mm-hmm. seems that people have different definitions of safe money, and you want your money to be safe as it relates to their savings. What are some different ways that you see people defining safe money? That's one of my favorite areas to talk about. I'm really glad we're going to dive into this on this segment here because uh, safe money is a funny word for some people because there's different terms for, for that, I would say. Most people, though, generally speaking, they, they say conservative, right? I have conservative money, um, typically less volatile. Uh, some of it may be guaranteed, and it probably doesn't grow as much or grow at all in some cases. So when you look at the definition of safe money, that shouldn't be something, in my opinion, that is is volatile. It should be safe. Um, so there's a big difference, I always say, between conservative, because conservative still goes up and down. It just goes up and down a little bit less, right, than moderate or aggressive or any of those other categories. But you know, safe money, to me, should be guaranteed or it shouldn't have any type of downside to it. Um, but that's my aspect. But I think most people, when they're de- defining safe money, when I'm talking with them, they think of it as more of their conservative money, not safe money. 
Okay, if you have just, uh, you know, 10 seconds to describe safe money, what is your official definition of safe money? My official definition is guaranteed, right? Um, when I look at safe money, I mean, I shouldn't be losing any money on that money at all. I mean, that's that's why it's safe. Um, when I look at the safe safety of that, there's only a few areas that you could really find that. I mean, uh, a lot of people say, oh, I have safe money, it's in bonds, and, and we'll dive into that in a sec. But most people, when I'm talking safe money with clients, that is a bank account, a savings account, a CD, a fixed index annuity, or a fixed annuity. Those are really the only few in cash. Those are really the only few places that are safe money, meaning that they don't lose value based off what the market's doing. Mm -hmm. Do most people have an accurate understanding of how much safety and how much risk they have in their own portfolio? I would say majority of the time, absolutely not. You know, uh, I, I could tell you story after story. We have a lot of clients come in, and like I like I was saying before, part of our discovery process is um, I'll ask clients. I ask them quite a few different ways. You know, hey, uh, if you had to rate yourself from zero to a hundred, where do you think you'd land? A lot of the times, it's like, oh, I would be a you know, let's say I'd be a 50. I'm pretty moderate. Mm -hmm. And then I ask them, okay, what types of returns would you want? And they say something really high, you know, 10 or 12% returns. Okay. Uh, let's keep talking. How much money are you comfortable with losing? And they go, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be comfortable with losing more than maybe five or 10%. <laughs> right. And then I go, okay. Uh, and they say, oh, and I have a million dollars. Okay. Well, can you give me your statements? Maybe they have, you know, two IRAs or Roth IRA or how, however many statements they have. And I'll run that in our risk report as part of our next conversation at our next meeting where this isn't meant to be like a scare tactic or I told you so. It's really not what it's about at all. It's really just about having a conversation that's realistic about risk and return. And it's funny because when we sit down and, and after they've told me where they want to be, and that client, if you're listening, remember he said he was around a 50. Yeah. I'll run it. Some of them are an 85. Wow. And it's like, okay, so <laughs> in this scenario, essentially, if the market went down like 2008 or like some of the other uh, downturns, you can potentially go down about 40%. And they're like, so if I had a million dollars, I would lose essentially around 400,000 during a bear market. Wow. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of what your holdings are saying. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying, based off of what these reporting showing us, that's kind of what the risk you're taking. Is that something you're comfortable with? They go, well, absolutely not. I don't. I told you I wanted to be a 50. I, I wouldn't want to lose more than five or ten percent. And then that's when we can really dive in and start building a retirement plan based around what their comfortability is. You know, I think, um, and there's other people that they would say, yeah, that is, I am comfortable with that, and that's fine. That means we're set up right. But we want to make sure we really understand how much safety and risk you have in your own portfolio to make sure that, again, it really just makes you feel more confident in that retirement plan. You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. And, and Logan, there seems to be a real disconnect here. And uh, why do you think so many people out there are misinformed about the safety of the money they've saved? Like you said, misinformed is a good word to use there. Um, a lot of people out there, they just like I said, this isn't their full-time job. They probably are, you know, uh, uh, they probably work at Kaiser or Costco or Edison or, or engineers or whatever they are, right? That's their job. They don't do this for a living. I do. So I know a lot about it. And that's one of my favorite things to talk about is just educating uh, people. But when you look at um, the misconceptions out there, I always laugh because I'll, I'll have a client come in and they're like, yeah, I have a uh, you know, I got 70% of my money in bonds, right? It's safe. I don't, I don't want to lose any money. So that's why I have it in bonds. Yeah. And I always tell them, you know, I, looking at the, uh, of course, I'm a, I'm a math guy. I like to show people. I don't like to talk about things. I like to show people. So let's talk about it to make sure we're looking at realistic expectations. And it's funny. So some clients will be like, well, I'm 70% in bonds right now because I just don't like uh, the risk of the market. I, don't, I just want conservative, safe money. And I tell them, are you aware over the last six months that the, the, van, the total bond index through Vanguard is down around 11%? over the last six months. You know, in my definition, a 10% correction on, on bonds, that's not considered safe money, right? That obviously is maybe more conservative to equities and stocks, but it still has a lot of downside to it. Um, and so it's funny, you look at, I always tell them, you look at the S&P 500, which is the top 500 stocks in, the, in basically the United States, it shows you that that's down around 11% and the bonds are down around 10%. So if your safe money is all in bonds, obviously it's not so safe, right? It's fluctuating as much as the more aggressive money. And I, and I always tell people when we're building a retirement plan, 
we really got to make sure we understand the risk of each of our of each of our savings vehicles of each of our investments because there's other ways out there to get diversified safe money outside of just the bond market especially with the way things have been going most economists are predicting that bonds aren't going to be a great place to be uh, for for a while especially with like this lady I was talking about with over 70% of her money she thought was in safe money and it's down 10% so really got to understand what what we're what we're doing with our money. Gosh, this is a really important conversation we're here we're having here, and uh, hope everybody's paying close attention to this. Uh, Logan, can you give us a specific example of a particular client who needed more safety in their portfolio, and and how you were able to help, and, and how were they allocated before meeting with you, and what kind of changes did you suggest? Yeah, you know what, I actually have a uh, a newer client that came on board about six months ago. And her name's Sylvia. Sylvia was uh, 65 years old, and uh, she'd done a very good job saving for retirement. Did a really good job. She had around, uh, she had a few different 401ks, but she had around $900,000 put away in 401ks, all in the market. And she had around, I th- it was around 60% of it was in bonds, mm-hmm. right? So she said, "I'm approaching retirement. I should go in these life cycle target date funds, the 2030 or the 2025." So at that point, around 60% of her money was in bonds. And uh, she had around $200,000 in the bank that she wasn't using. She just kind of had it there because she didn't know what to do with it. So when you look at it all in, she had a pretty sizable portfolio and was, and was ready to retire this year. Mm-hmm. And, and so her biggest thing was, well, you know what? I'm in bonds because I just don't want to be, I just don't want to have risk. You know, I don't like losing money. I know, I, I know with the market money, it's going to go up and down and I'm okay with that portion. But the bonds... Logan, I thought it was supposed to be safe and I'm, uh, my account value is going down very big, right? It's losing money right now. And this is during our discovery process. And so I was actually able to show her kind of like a similar chart I just talked about. I showed her like the Vanguard total bond index over the last five years is down 7%. Yeah. Right. I mean, so you look at that, that's a time when the market boomed and uh, there's a lot of other ways to diversify, like I always say, outside of just stocks and bonds. There's a whole nother world out there. So this particular client, her goals, Ron, when meeting with her in our discovery process was, I always ask clients, what, what is your goals? Give me your three goals. Hers was income, protection of principal, and growth and liquidity were third. That's like, okay. So um, we were able to kind of take a deep dive into what her accomplishments were, a little bit further into what those goals are, what we wanted out of each of them. And by moving some of the money that she had in, in bonds, that have been negative, I mind you, right? Have been negative over the last five years, about 7%. We were able to look at some of the fixed index annuities out there. Over the last five years, they've averaged, you know, between five and 6% returns with no loss of principal, right? So you take a look at that, just moving some of her bond portfolio over to the fixed index annuity with a negative return currently over to a fixed index annuity that has performed positive over that same time frame with no risk. So, you know, really being able to kind of open her mind as well as, of course, still having money in the market, being able to diversify using, of course, a little bit of some stocks, a little bit bonds, but a lot less than she currently had. Her portfolio looked totally different. Now she had guarantees, she had safe money, as well as I always talk about some of those annuities out there, the fixed index annuities, they have a cash flow for life. They'll pay you lifetime income. So she was able to take most of her 401k, turn it into a good cash flow, as well as still have liquidity growth and really accomplish those three concerns she had while really flipping the switch from a lot of those bonds that have just been dragging her down over the last few years to something that had principal protection, but still had a decent growth rate. And we still had our market money that we needed to perform and provide liquidity. So I think that's just a good example of what other options are out there. Of course, every client's different. When you come in, this might not be your exact plan because you might have different goals. But if this sounds like something that you've kind of been wanting and you're, you're kind of looking for a safe money for a portion of your portfolio, I think it's time you make the call and give us a call. I'd love to come in or have you come in and sit down and really go over what aspects are out there and how they could fit in your retirement plan. It is amazing how much uh, information you can get from that first discovery meeting. And so glad this particular person uh, decided to call your office and make it happen. The number to call if you'd like a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler is 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. Your number to call to make it happen. Call right now during the show and leave a message with your name and phone number. And uh, if you're calling during regular business hours during the week, you will more than likely get an actual human being who will answer your call. 
and arrange it for you that way. 888-823-PLAN. You can have a conversation with Logan either on the phone or via Zoom or some other technology, or maybe you might want to come into one of the offices in Hemet or Redlands. At any case, uh, you'll have an opportunity to learn a lot in that first discovery meeting, meaning that you will discover things about Logan and Regary Financial, and uh, Logan will discover things about you. You can decide if you like to work together. Either way, there's no obligation and no cost whatsoever. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial. There's more coming up on the other side of this quick break. Do you hear that? That's the sound of a plan that has some serious issues. Ah, much better. That's the sound of a plan that was created by someone listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. So which sound is your financial plan making? All right, now, welcome back to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial. Logan is the VP and Chief Investment Officer. Would love to have you give Logan's office a call and arrange to have a one-on-one conversation with him about your financial situation. The show is all about making sure you don't have to lie awake at night worried about outliving your money. You want to achieve some peace of mind? Well, then call this number and get started on that. 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN. It's all about getting you to and through retirement. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make that happen with Logan Sadler. Hey, Logan, as always, we got some great listeners out there all over Southern California who ask great questions every week. And the first question today is from Sandy in San Diego. Sandy says, I recently finished cancer treatments and have been told that I have a clean bill of health. Uh, congratulations, Sandy. Awesome. Way to go. Yeah, but at awesome. age 62, this experience was a real wake-up call. And it's changed my outlook on retirement. I always assumed that I'd work another four or five years, but now I think I'd like to retire as soon as I can and enjoy life while my health allows. Would it be irresponsible to walk away from health insurance before I'm eligible for Medicare or a bad idea to start my Social Security at this age? Yeah, great question there, Sandy. I think, uh, like Ron was saying, congratulations. Way to way to beat that out, and, and hopefully you got a cl- clean bill of health moving forward there. That's that's awesome news, and thanks for writing in. You know, what I would say here is this is a this is a very real topic for a lot of people. A lot of you listeners out there have had a health issue like this where it does kind of either uh, wake you up as far as, well, unfortunately, I might not live forever, so I might want to retire early, right? I might not want to work those extra four or five years. And I think that's why ret- as retirement planning as early as possible is very, very important to make sure we're on track for whenever we need to retire. But in this in this circumstance, to answer your question directly, you really, I'd really want to make sure what aspects do you have for other means of, uh, of financial stability to cover Medicare? Of course, it's not a bad idea to retire early if we have the financial means to get by. And, and, and starting your Social Security early would be the same a- aspect where I would want to make sure what other assets do we have to cover us to pay for Medicare? Because I, I actually had a client uh, last week who was going to re- retire uh, at about 64, 65, ended up pulling the trigger at 62. So I see that a lot. But uh, you want to make sure it makes financial sense. I know after a health scare like that, we think, oh man, I might not live forever, but you still might live a very long time. So we want to make sure that we have the right financial means to get us by and make sure we're not pulling the trigger too early to where all of a sudden, you know, in five or six years, we're out of money. You want to make sure we really have built a plan because the odds are you still could live for a long time, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years at that point. So you want to make sure your retirement plan is built to last with your longevity. Yeah. Sandy, again, congratulations on uh, going through cancer treatments and getting through that and getting a 100% uh, clean bill of health. We're real proud of you for that. Hope you'll make a call to Logan's office and come in and have a conversation about those financial matters. Uh, Next question here is from Julie in Riverside. And Julie says, my husband is getting a substantial raise at work, which I'm obviously not complaining about. We're already both maxing out our 401ks. So I'm a little worried about what will happen with this extra money. I don't want to just increase our lifestyle spending and not make any real progress with this extra income. What do you suggest? Boy, it sounds like she has a, a, a great problem to have. 
Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with Ron there. It's not, not a bad situation to be in, and it sounds like you're well on track with having the right mindset of what to do with the money. Um, what I would recommend right off the bat is, like you said, is most people say, well, I'm going to get a raise at work, and what I'll do is I'm going to enjoy it for a month or two, and then I'll start saving. The problem is that that won't happen, right? We typically uh, we typically end up spending the money. I always joke, you know, Uncle Sam doesn't even trust us with our money. That's why he takes taxes out first, right? Um, so you really want to make sure... Uh, uh, what I would do is if you really have a goal for the money, I would really get a purpose of, is this going to be for retirement? Is this just extra cash for vacations and retirement? Is What is this for? We want to be aggressive with it or conservative. And we a good advisor could help you know, obviously articulate that for you. But really what I would do is start automating it. You know, Whether that, that month is, let's say it's a $1,000 a month raise, start automating 500 a month of it to go into some type of investment. And of course, I can give further investment advice when you get when you call in. But you really want to automate automate that and get it out of your bank account as soon as possible. So that way it's going towards what you want it to go towards to build for you. Because like you said, if we if you start uh, living off it a little bit, your lifestyle always adjusts. Don't you guys uh, ever remember when you were 20 years old and you said, man, I'm making 30000 If I could just make forty, I'd be okay, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're making 60000 and you're still broke, right? And then and then now you're making a hundred and you never started saving. So you really, like you said, you have the right mindset of starting before it comes in. And congratulations on maxing out uh, the two 401ks. That is awesome. It sounds like you guys are on a good track, but give us a call. I'd love to kind of sit down and give you more intended and more purposeful investment advice on that after knowing a little bit more about you. But that's a, a great, great situation to be in. It sounds like you guys have a great mindset. Man, it, I'll tell you, it, it really is amazing how your expenses quickly expand to take up all your money. You know? <laughs> isn't, isn't that funny? All of a sudden, it's like, well, all of a sudden, I got a new car. Oh, then I got a boat. Or, oh, yeah. I had to get this. I upgraded my TV package. And all of a sudden, you don't have any money of that raise. It's all gone. You know? Exactly. And then you're hoping for another one. You know? <laughs> exactly. And the the next one. happen then. <laughs> exactly. You're like, well, when I get that next one, I'm going to do the right thing. And yeah. it doesn't happen. All right. Well, let's go to Orange County. Jimmy has a question. Jimmy says, my daughter will be heading to college in a few months, and we're working on the financial aspects of it. Logan, our plan has always been for her to get loans for school instead of us paying for it because we want her to have skin in the game. But I'm wondering if it would be better if we loaned her the money instead of her being stuck with government loans. What do you think about that? Yeah, this has always been kind of a back and forth subject for myself. And I will say that the three questions this week were, were phenomenal. This one's a tough one because I've seen it done both ways. I don't think one of them's better than the other. I would just kind of ask this question with a question to you, Jimmy. You know, obviously I get what you're saying. You want your daughter to have skin in the game. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. Put the loans in her name, have her pay them. And if you can help her out when you want to, the downside is, as we've all heard and know, college loans, the interest rates on those are very, very high. So that would be the very big concern is if your daughter, um, you know, stops paying them, are you going to want to pay them or are you going to want to help her out with them? And, and the interest is something to really worry about. That would be the con of that option. Option two is, yeah, you pay for them and help her out with them. And then maybe I know some people say, well, I'll have my daughter uh, pay us monthly. Well, then all of a sudden they stop paying and you feel bad and then you get caught paying for it all. And then, you know, we know how that all works. So yeah. not saying your daughter's not going to pay you, but just I've seen it happen that way. I would really kind of, you know, your daughter better than I do. I would look and say, hey, is she responsible? And do I have the money to pay it and not take out loans and have her pay me back somehow um, and, or pay her a portion of it? So that way she has some skin in the game. But I would say there's pros and cons to both. I would really just say, which one can you afford? As well as how well do you how well do you trust your daughter with money and 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 would she pay you back if you wanted the money back or how would that work? But the student loans is a very big commitment. I always tell people it's funny because uh, before we ever know anything about finances, they sign us up for student loans, right? At, at six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent interest. So uh, it's something where I would definitely look at those loans with her and make sure she understands the implications of it. And that way, if you do decide to finance it yourself, she might be a lot more appreciative knowing how much money you actually saved her over the long run. That'd be my recommendation. Yeah. Well, a lot of good questions today. And you said all three of these questions were just excellent and gave you a good opportunity to, to talk about a lot of uh, varied subjects. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, you may be listening to the show today and thinking of a question of your own, and maybe you can get one of your questions answered on the show today. But the most important information I can give you is the phone number to call Regary Financial. And Logan, when someone has been listening to this show and, and they finally decide to get around to making that phone call, take us step-by-step step what happens then when they after they call this number and leave a message. 
Well, that's a great point, Ron, after they finally get around to making that phone call. It's funny because I have met with a few of you now where you've been listening to the show for a year plus. And you know what's funny? I always joke is time is not always on our side. So if you're listening to this show and been listening to it for a long time and you've been thinking about how do I transition to retirement or how could I better diversify or how do I get a real retirement plan put together, it's time to make that phone call. Come in and let's sit down or do a Zoom at one of our offices. It's crazy. We're meeting with clients all over the place and it's been great with Zoom and the communication that way. But uh, give us a call. And what we'll do is at that meeting, we're going to sit down and really take a deep dive into a lot of these subjects we talk about on the radio and really answer more of how does it pertain to your situation? If you've saved well for retirement and you're wondering how to get a comprehensive retirement plan and you're retiring in, let's say, the next five years and you're looking to get an income plan together, it's time to make that phone call. Come in. It doesn't cost anything for that initial discovery meeting to sit down and see what we're trying to accomplish. And let's see if we're a good fit. And, And at the end of the day, we're Worst case, I'll answer your questions and and we'll be able to provide some value to you. So go ahead and make that phone call and I look forward to meet with you guys. And I think he will enjoy getting to know Logan. 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. He's the same guy you hear on the radio show here. What you hear is what you get. Nice guy. You're going to enjoy a relaxing conversation and find out some very important things about your portfolio, about your plan. If you have one, if you don't have a plan, that's all the more reason to call this number. 888-823-PLAN. It's all about getting it to and through retirement. One more time. Phone number 888-823-PLAN. Logan Sadler at Regary Financial. Hey, Logan, it's been fun being with you today, and I know you've reached a lot of folks out there. Yeah, thanks, Ron. I felt like this was a great show. We covered a lot of really uh, sensitive points right now in the current world we're in as far as safe money and all the other stuff that goes into financial planning and education. And I look forward to being back here next week with another edition of The Financial Beat, bringing you guys some great educational value when it comes to retirement planning, and we'll see you next week. Everybody, in the meantime, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. The information provided is for educational purposes only and is not intended as investment advice for anyone. All information discussed is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. The views presented today are those of BD Financial Group and do not necessarily represent the views of Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC. The opinions expressed are subject to change without notice and do not constitute financial tax or legal advice. Please consult with your financial professional before executing any financial strategy. Investment advisory and financial planning services are offered through Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Alpha Star and BD Financial Group are independent entities. SEC registration does not constitute an endorsement of the firm by the commission, nor does it indicate that the advisor has attained a particular level of skill or ability.